Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And Uber Magic, good one. We were trying to figure that out. How can you import audio? So, like, I can put a, like a little clock here, one of those cardboard clocks, and I can stream the video and have the mic cut off but have audio still coming out. Something like that, anyway. And then I can switch the pictures on the screen, even though I wasn't sitting here. And you wouldn't hear, I can have the microphone off, so. Just for certain applications, that might come in handy, I don't know. You scroll down anyway. I get a kick out of, uh, out of the fact that the pundits and mainstream media will use bananas and airplanes as examples for background radiation. And it occurred to me that was an awesome way to bludgeon uh, those videos and those stories in the comments section. You say stuff like, uh, well, if they're going to go comparing bananas to Chernobyl's murdering radiation, then I'm not going to bother listening to the rest of it. It's just as foolish as that statement or something. To that line, you know what I mean? So how can you have a debate with people that are going to use bananas and airplane radiation in comparison with something that will murder you, your loved ones, and everyone in your community? That a pound, a couple of pounds of it will kill everybody on the planet and all the mammals. How can you, how can you sit there? You know, that's what you can say to these people. How can they sit there and do that? Well, you know, they read teleprompters and they don't. They're supposed to have fact checked. I mean, that's the illusion you get from TV and everything else. But you don't. And. Uh, Uber Magic got uh, 2012 link below the video, and you'll see him in the comment section. He's got another couple of videos out today, folks. You might want to check out uh, after, or even now. You can watch this one after. Hi, Benny. Hi, Albert. Hi, Screamy. Hi, Third Watch. Hi, Cucumber. News Eye. Ray Clay. Let's say hi to a few people. Mark. Lunar. Lori. Sorry about your daughters. Don't like can't play in the rain. There's only a few covered there. I got everybody starlight. Hi. Hi, Ketzer K. And I think I got everybody. Ha ha. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And so the media is using this background radiation routine to model, uh, to murder, I should say, people. That's what it's doing. And. I've seen so much of it, and lately you can tell it's been driving me crazy, but now it's actually starting to really get under my skin because I keep running into it over and Even the pros are all doing that. We'll use that as an example. That's the, it's the, the example of bananas and airplanes to the Fukushima radiation. I thought about that today, and I said, well, the equivalent would be going to the dump and going through all the garbage bags full of all the gross stuff you can imagine all the rotten stuff, and then finding a pair of sneakers, and then taking that pair of sneakers and jumping on them and expecting somebody somewhere on the planet to scream because they own those sneakers and they have a connection to those sneakers, and those sneakers, do you get it, you know, right? You kind of see how far-fetched. In fact, I would put it that somebody in another dimension would feel it, not because that's how far out and off the target it is to a... Uh, you know, uh, to compare those radiations uh, to the public. We'll probably get them hung in the future, hopefully. We're lucky. And somebody will put those videos up on YouTube. That, I think, would be appropriate and would be pretty cool. And you can't blame the people once they find out how many lies the media has told them. All those painted teleprompt readers are in a whole lot of shit, okay? No one's going to protect them. They got nowhere to go, and they got no one to blame. Only their selves and their hair and their Gucci glasses and caps and blah blah blah. That at some point in your life you have to make a decision. Are you gonna tell? Are you gonna tell people? And you know, a lot of these people, if they come and spoke out, they would be probably the most popular people on the planet all of a sudden. They would have all kinds of deals, they'd be making more money, and they would look back upon that moment of making that transition because they had the opportunity to, to stir it up properly. But none of them are capable because all they do is read teleprompters and swallow makeup that is toxic all day long. 
and ingest it and get caked in it and breathe it. And then all those fake perfumes they're breathing, the parts per millions um, for your sensory glands, your, your, the receptors and all that, all of these binders that you're putting into your, every time you breathe because you wafer that stuff up. And that's all done on purpose. This is, uh, these people are guinea pigs, literally. Um, we all smoke two packs a day now. That's a great comment, Nubro. It's a really good one. Yeah, and I can't keep up with the comments anymore, so I'm kind of doing it this way, trying to hold my own a little bit. Tonight we're okay. Uh, a lot of good comments last night after I was reading. Calling Miss Milky. Uh, nobody can keep up with Dana seven days a week, 31 days in a row. It's just, there's nobody can hold their own with me, I don't think. I'm a machine in that sense, but I mean, everybody, it's impossible to have a schedule that'll work for my schedule, see? Is what I'm really saying. I'm trying to put myself up on a little pedestal there for a second, but that doesn't really work for me. I, uh, let me catch who said what. Yeah, there's some pretty good stuff going on in the comments sec section sometimes. A few people got a little bit of growing up to do, but none of the regulars, but you get some strange comments. Well, I, I've been editing or monitoring my videos for many years. And I got videos there where there's 4,000 people screaming at me every name you can imagine. And some of them are pretty funny. It's just, I've sat with my friends and just read through all the insults, and some of that stuff is just brilliant. Just driven by pure hate. You gotta like it. Or not. You, you let it eat you apart. Hi, Screamy. Hi, Ray Ram. Mark T. Albert. I got everybody. Benny's happy. You want more, Benny? Hi, Carl. Bellinger. Bellinger. I was just wondering about that comment you left on my video last night. Carl, let me read it for you. He said, yeah, I got kicked off your channel at the last five minutes. Don't know why. Hope I didn't do anything wrong. Just wanted to say good night and thanks again. I got no idea what that means. You can't get kicked off my channel. That's your connection. It's got nothing to do with me, right? But that would be your computer. And like the comment section, you actually seem normal, but I don't understand that comment. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that I wanted to bring it up because I don't know why you left it there. Hope I didn't do anything wrong. Like, I don't understand that thing. But it's not a big deal in the sense of <laughs> I get, I got so many death threats. I've had, uh, the trolls find my whole family, not that it matters, but find my whole family and their addresses and post that all over the internet, chase my comments all over the internet, and then do that as a reply to me. And I, and, uh, I always thought that was really, how did they do that? How did they know everything about me so much they were able to find all my family? I have a big family, and do that to me. They used to phone my home and make death threats to me. And that's just Canada. It's all talk. Hi, Missing Sky. Hi, Europrop. Baking cures everything. So the, the audio, I switched the audio, folks. And so I'm just kind of adjusting myself here the first few minutes. Because I'm so used to that other tone. And music, by the way, uh, I think it's 432 hertz. Not 440. Which is what you hear in... in in uh, all the music you're listening to and that YouTube will record in this 440. And there's a difference. Um, Goring, during the Nazi period, apparently decreed that music was to be played at 440 hertz. And 432 is a hertz that resonates with your body because your body is made of water. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but anyway... Uh, well, I'm telling you this right now, but anyway, I'm telling it to you. That's all finished the, the short story. And so even today, most music is 440. Uh, but orchestras are tuning their instruments to 432. And so if you have an instrument, try that. And you'll find it's a much sweeter note. It's a much 
the note sustains itself much longer and you feel it. It actually truly resonates with your body because that's what it was designed over millennials, those pitches. And so 440 is more like an, you know, like an, like you're getting ready to go into a fight, like an aggression, the way those hurts. So you can see, also see why radio waves are such a big factor for a lot of people, why they are um, activists about the radio waves because they can affect you on the hertz. And your TV, for instance, is actually set, I think it's 8 hertz, is set at the same hertz as your brain. That's not an accident. The first TV ever made, they had worked out the hertz. And that was uh, Nikola Tesla had worked out. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm not digressing. But I want you to understand something else about life and propaganda and everything else, how the 440 affects you, the commercials and all that other stuff, and the music, and how TV can, can hold on to you and hypnotize people. And it's not their fault, right? That's what I'm trying to say. It's not their fault. And so you got to learn to break the paradigm. One of the ways uh, I always try to break the paradigm is I don't give them any wiggle, wiggle room. And so that, like the headline of the video is... Uh, Fukushima radiation is different than bananas and airplane radiation because it's uh, you can't compare those two things. One will kill you pretty friggin' fast and guaranteed, and the other one is indigenous to the planet Earth, and it's not a factor, and it shouldn't be thrown into an equation. But I see it all the time on ABC and CBC and BBC and AB NBC and MSNBC, and every pundit on the planet that ever talked about radiation, and every expert out there that ever talks about radiation, they'll all do it. And they're the same ones you see everywhere. And so I don't trust nothing anymore because they do the stuff like that. It's not just that one thing. Right? There has to be more than one or two or three things about uh, certain things that, are, that cause me to be that way. But... Um, that's important to understand that music, you can actually convert music back to 432 and enjoy it so much more, where it should be, where it resonates with your body. And there's a lot of factors overcoming. That's one of the things I said, all my instruments to that. And I'll move on. Um, and another one for 528 hertz. Burns. You too? I don't know. It's a good question. Did I get kicked off or something? It'll come back. Still rolling. Cause it looked like I got jumped off for a second. Did I did I drop for a bit? Folks? Yeah, under the picture. It's just where it gets it's handy for me, but I'll try that new brew. Thank you. Like The new home for my microphone. Just don't lean ahead. And so the pictures. Well, yeah, there's a bit of a problem, isn't it? I need a, I need a sound room by rights so everything was organized, you know? So buildings, uh, the radiation coming out of those buildings got nothing to do with bananas. Radiation, folks. And that's a shock, right? Because you've been told your whole life that it does. But, um... I, I don't know how to break it to you, outside of the point that the radiation that's coming out of that bugger, uh, oh my goodness, you don't want nothing to do with it. And that's what all the fuss is about. And the ones in the banana, they're indigenous to the planet, and they're benign, they don't mean nothing, they're insignificant. But some reason or the other, the media likes to say, oh, you know, it's the, it's like background radiation from a banana, folks. And let me go down a little bit further because I know I got something I want to do there. We were talking. 
Come on, computer, you can do it. You're a big computer now. See how scary that looks? Where's all the pools? So the pundits out there are even saying, now oh, the pools are underneath that. Of course they are! There was never no pools on it. How about that? Let's go with that line. Maybe that'll work for you even better tomorrow or yesterday or whatever. And that's the problem with these lying, 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 unbelievable lies. And so smooth how these transition to solar power. <laughs> to wind power off Fukushima. And they, they have dedicated teams of PR firms. Remember, the Pentagon got 29,000 PR firms or uh, employees that that's all they do is PR 29,000 for the Pentagon just probably a lot more than that but that's what they admit it to 29,000 and you need that because uh, the Pentagon created 5 million orphans in Afghanistan over the last decade which are tax dollars so you created 5 million orphans to get the 11,000 Taliban and you've fired uh, depleted uranium, which is Dolram, which is uranium. And for some reason, it used to be called Dolram, depleted uranium, low-level radioactive material. But they didn't even like that, you know, that, that acronym, low-level. Which uh, takes a cup of, if you put it in your office, will kill everybody in an hour. Or if you put it in your child's um, play school, it'll kill every kid there in an hour, and it'll do that every hour for a million years, because a billion years, rather, a half-life of a couple of billion years because of the uranium. And there's so many other concoctions that we don't understand that are so important to the equation. And uh, <coughs> the radiation the media wants to talk about is the bananas and the airplanes and even the x-rays which actually, those in particular are bad for you. They're ionized radiation. And, and so they try to, they, they always associate it with banana, uh, bananas and the airplane, which is a, that's, that's the first lie. But then do it to the Fukushima? To do, to do that to Fukushima is not only yellow journalism, it's murdering journalism. Because the people that buy into that will die because they don't understand the implications of this radiation, because they were lulled into this hideous lie by this 8 hertz TV thing, this creature that is very, uh, it's very harmful, you know. A TV is actually harmful to your brain. You ever see a kid sit on TV and you try to get their attention? They, they, they can't hear you. You don't exist. You get mad at them. And they, huh? And, but then they're back locked in again. They can't, right? And you have to turn it off a lot of the times because they just can't break. And then they'll scream in a fit. I want to be addicted. I'm addicted. Mom or dad, let me have that TV. Um, that's not an accident, see? It's not like a book where you can close a book, right? It's so powerful. And uh, they know that. And it used to be when a TV was created that uh, if you had four hours of the left, you had to have four hours on the right on because it was such a powerful pl platform. People needed both narratives. But eventually, they got rid of one narrative, and, they, and then they just kept that narrative. And so anybody looks at the other party, their narratives are remarkable life, alike. Because you got, you when it comes to, the, to how that game actually truly works, you got the left and the right and the middle and the center and the far and the extreme the nihilistic and the Pol Pot and the Mao and you got all of these different structures of uh, commonwealth or imperialistic and um, that's the devoid see it was supposed to be just some simple jobs for a left and a right paradigm or you know uh, ideas a true left two, two different ideas but they turned it into two different monsters that ultimately create the same idea. And we went down that road on purpose because the media plays that game so well against you and your loved ones and the people you're trying to talk to and inform and educate and mold and manipulate so that they do the right thing. And it it's truly is like something out of a horror fiction that we face that we just can't make up. You can't make up how terrorizing, terrifying what's coming at us is. We truly can't. And New World Magic had a banana on a plane once.
Gotta like that. Uh, VersaTube says Mail Online Yakuza gangsters forcing homeless people to work on the Fukushima. And I've covered that many times, and so is Nobu Magic 2012, and so is Miss Milky the Clown uh, one, and an earlier one. Ain't Jester Mile High Club thing going, Nobu. Checks and balance, hey. Uh, hi, Eva. Yeah, uh, what's your question, Eva? I'll keep an eye out. Hi, Ron. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, Ron. Glad to hear it. Did you catch that song that was underneath that? You do that, right? Under under that video I put out earlier today. Uh, that's part one. And it's, I says part four there, part one of part four, tutorials. But it's actually, I realized today uh, that was part one of Roger was like, yeah, it's part one of part five, don't you think, Dana? Because you still got to do... I want to bring it all together at the end. So I'm going to teach you how to use four different programs, no matter if you ever touched it before or you just never heard of it before and you can already work it on your own. And then the link is there. These are free programs. You use a little tiny processing power on your computer. And I've checked this out and used it, used these particular programs extensively. I think I've downloaded over 1,500 programs that I tried to work out. Um... Uh, by 2003 or something, I had went through 1,500 programs. So I was, I was, by then I was really good at installing and uninstalling and reformatting my computer because I wasn't good at certain things <laughs> and certain programs you're not supposed to put on your computer with other programs and just made a mess of it. But I, I used to get a, I spent a long time working on security issues with computers and um, it was a good thing really, but. That taught me a lot anyway, right? Uh, and so I got some really good programs. These are free programs. And, and each one, each day I'll put out a sh uh, This was the hard one, but it's the most important one because without this one, the other ones are hard to do. So get you through that one. The old cam, it's really simple. It uses no processing power. As soon as you turn it off, it's gone. It shuts down. And that's the same thing with all these other programs. I'll show you the function I use it for. And if you feel like using it for something else, you can figure it out on your own. But I can give you the decent functions so that you can actually produce a a really powerful video and then just your, you need your imagination but I also hope you understanding how that works and the, how in detail it can really get in order to make it all uh, what I'm doing if I were to show and I'll be showing you that it'll probably be like 300 different pieces I had to fit together to come up with four tiny short tutorials but in that way I understand everybody got a fair chance of learning so I digress I know but they're coming, and I started the day, got back into it. Remember, this is 31 days of banging my head, uh, 25, yeah, today is 31 days, so this will be the first month since October 25th, 2013, 7.3 earthquake in, uh, off of Fukushima, and there was no damage, but the buildings in Tokyo, several hundred extra kilometers away, swayed heavily, we've seen that on ABC and CNN. And so we figured that some of the damage you're looking at uh, fell down, right? Because that was caused that was caused by those explosions, and then you had all this damage. And we figured more rods have fell down because remember the rods from each of these that are missing these pools they exploded. Remember that explosion I just showed you? Well, there was four uh, the nuclear weaponized facilities there. Um, Power was just a byproduct of what they'd done in that place. Remember, those 1,300 isotopes weren't necessary to create power, folks. It was actually around 3,000, but I like 1,300. It makes me feel better. The, um, the four, the four uh, detonations, we're looking at one and three there right now, but these are only partial pictures of those detonations. They don't tell the whole story. Well, they blew all these rods all over the place, but they also left a lot of rods sitting on the edge, the edge of these uh, pits here. And, and see, so that whole building should have been melted down and disappeared into a sinkhole because there's 9,000 degree Fahrenheit underneath that. And so the, we're worried, every time they had like those 7.3 earthquake they did to have 31 days ago, and they had 10 days before that in, in Boho, uh, and my heart's broke about that one. Philippines, which don't even exist anymore. 
The Philippines don't exist anymore. Imagine if every house in Canada just got knocked down and tossed for miles wide. And that's a minimum F4, which is the most fearsome thing you could imagine, but not 100 miles wide. That should be on the moon or something. Not the moon, but Mars, because it has that those types of things. But you wouldn't, you might expect to see it on planet Earth five or six million years ago, maybe, before the dinosaurs showed up or something like that, before the animal kingdom was around, because a hundred miles wide, uh, sustained winds of 195 miles an hour out the Philippines. This is because of a radiated ocean, and I got so much here on that. Did I get kicked off again? Hi, Doug. And somebody left a comment there at the beginning and they remarked to spam. I tried to unclick him from spam and I can't see him now. So uh, they've asked a question before. What was the question? You have to pour steel down around the cores. Would that help? Because they understood that uh, cement. And I know Nuber Magic 2012 helped out and tried to explain to him that Unfortunately, uh, 2,000 degrees, everything will melt. And those temperatures down there are 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And we never ever thought we would have to deal with something like that. We always thought that the TEPCO employees would change all the light bulbs on schedule. And that no tsunamis and earthquakes, whether created or by nature or any other way, because believe you me, it can be created the other way. And it fits into that Agenda 21 where they get rid of 95% of humans, but they also are getting rid of 95% of all the other species, and they destroy every living organism, period, the bacteria, the flora, the fauna, and the coastline, and the oxygen ability of the Pacific Ocean in a lot shorter time than those peer-reviewed German academic studies predict uh, when they were based upon a two-week flaw of the initial release and there's 300 tons minimum a day, not counting what's running over the cores, the groundwater, from the natural uh, indigenous river bed that's 100 feet under the topsoil they brought in to build Fukushima on. It's just so complicated. And that nobody ever talks about the plutonium or the strontium or the long, you know, the uranium, the long-term massive amount of uranium, incredible, inconceivable, just wicked, wicked, just wicked thing we have on this planet. that shouldn't be on the planet. It's supposed to be in the sarcophagus till the end of time, and no one even bothers anymore. They just dump it in the oceans like they have for the last 50 years. To the point now where the only thing that's going to be left on the planet in the future will whatever could adapt to the radiation. And because man can never get off the planet because he can't deal with the radiation, you know, it's not hard to suspect that building it on a fault line wasn't a mistake. Building it knowing that three of the scientists quit because the flaw was designed and this was going to, it was inevitable to happen, was not a, uh, is not an illusion. And so it looks like they wanted something like this to happen. They put all these facilities on the oceans and rivers that run into the ocean. They have Sellafield, there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into that ocean, but they're not from melted cores. And like Radchick was saying last night, I caught the comment after, was that Chernobyl was only one-third the size of one at, number one at Fukushima, for instance. And one-third the size, and only 30% of that one in Chernobyl melted down. Fukushima had released more in one day, uh, Fu um, Fukushima did, than all of Chernobyl's combined. In just one day, there was that much release, see? Uh, and we're talking, you know, everybody screams about the cesium-137 and the, the iodine with the eight-day life shelf. Uh, those people definitely need to be swinging, swinging uh, in the breeze in the future because they know what they're doing, they know what they're saying. There's 1,300 isotopes out there that are so wicked, uh, we can't come up with a name, wicked enough for them. We really, truly can't. And that's the most... A uh, hurtful thing is that they hit all this for them. We need 1,300 Geiger counters that are calibrated to each Pacific isotope. I can't drive that point home enough. And then we need two separate ones, one for bananas and one for uh, 
background radiation that is indigenous to the planet and it's not, not harmful to anything. The animals and the humans and the species, the plants, the ocean, life itself has adapted to them over millenniums. But these new creatures, there's, there's nothing out there can save you. And it's in the troposphere, it's in the stratosphere. It's circling the planet many times over. And when people talk to you about radiation from atomic bombs, that's got nothing to do with the radiations that are running out of Fukushima either. That's another mass hoax they're per perpetrating. And it's pretty easy to skin these uh, perpetrations to pieces because <laughs> the atomic radiation, right, is completely different than 1300 weaponized mass. The MOX fuel is a million times worse than any reactor. Chernobyl is only one third the size of number one reactor at Fukushima. One third the size, and let me say that again, one third the size of the reactor that was at Chernobyl. And then when you look at number f uh, three reactor at, Chir at uh, Fukushima, that's a million times worse. And you'll hear the generic uh, plutonium mixed with uranium, which but a lot of people don't understand the other exoticness that goes into this and the weaponization of the other particles and leftover and all this other stuff from the yellow cake that they were able to extract at these flawed extraction facilities where they break down old plutonium strontium they, and then they're weaponizing it into an even smaller volume. But they're also playing around with stuff like... Um, matter and antimatter, okay? They understand how that works and that's the scales they, they, they need the most to get the biggest bang for the buck, apparently. And MOX fuel might very well be one of those tries at that concoction. That's why it's so deadly and so toxic. And those plumes have been airborne coming out of those pits of hell. Every time you have an earthquake, more rods fall down on 9,000 degrees and becomes aerosol. So hundreds of thousands of tons of this stuff has already been aerosoled. And the system that you live in, instead of telling you anything, giving you any kind of chance, they decide that they're not going to. That that's a conscious decision. They, they're in the know and they know. And so they have made a decision that they're not going to admit to it. And as this rolls out, they're going to blame it on the GMO. They're going to blame it on your cell phones. They're going to find many ways to blame the, the, the massive rates of cancer on. But they can't live in denial, see? That's not going to work any longer. And that's the point of what I'm trying to say to you, is that this ocean is dead and it's going to create superstorms. Inconceivable. Four and five... Four and five hundred miles an hour. I suspect in the near future, because it's hemorrhaging out there so much, it's so powerful. The MOX fuel is so powerful. That's like a million reactors melting down, not just one reactor. That's like uh, three million like Chernobyl's because they're only 30% and they're, they're one third the size. So that's like three million reactors on this planet melting down and then water pouring over them into the ocean every day kind of radiation. Yes, there's 300 million cubic kilometers, but there's three million um, reactors melting down every 24 hours, hemorrhaging into the ocean for 900, say, and 89, 990 days. I should do my math sometimes in that one. That seems one of the few numbers I really don't want to remember for some reason, because each day is that countdown to extinction for me and everybody else is paying attention. And there is a lot of people. And then we got to go out, and the only narrative we can get is this background radiation like a banana and an airplane. And then there's the mad, insane, absurd, uh, Assertions that Chernobyl is the worst one on the planet when it's only one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima, and there's three melted down one. One's got the MOX fuel in it, it's a million times worse than any other reactor. You can do the math. I'm just repeating myself at this stage on purpose because uh, it's say it's we'll, we'll go on a low number. There's a million reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean every day, that's the equivalent. But we got three reactors down there, so we got two reactors alongside it, we got all the pools that were above it. And the amounts that were in those pool. And this is different radiation than a nuclear bomb testing, okay? It's a different radiation. These isotopes didn't exist. It didn't exist when they were doing those nuclear explosions. These are the new weaponized stuff that we can't even... We sh it shouldn't be on the planet because we don't need it for energy. We don't need a better, bigger, meaner, crazier nuclear weapon. We got so many of the old ones, they all work fine, okay? Anything that can blow up a fucking city 
We don't need to get any better than that. We don't gain nothing by that. You got, the Americans got had 50, 60,000 silos in the freaking ground. That's enough to wipe out continents, all the continents. And the follow from that is enough to, to do incredible, unconceivable, inconceivable, endless damage. But nothing at all like uh, melted cores are going to do. That might be 10,000 years of melting and hemorrhaging into the ocean. So the ocean becomes one great big hell pit, 3,000, 300 million cubic kilometers of, of highly radioactive sludge at some point. What it is now, it's, it's radioactive sludge. It kills all the life in the ocean as it moves along. These big plumes that are constantly coming out, it kills all the oxygen and all the life. So there's no oxygen for fish to live in. And see, bananas don't do that, okay? Bananas won't do that. You can fill the ocean up with fucking bananas. Eh, I'm snapping. And it won't do that, okay? Fill it up with bananas and it won't fucking kill all the fish. Oh, Jesus. Excuse the language. I lost it finally. I lost it. I guess that's just the way it is some days. I'm just so tired of going out. And it's so easy to tear them apart because that's all you do in the comment section and say, bananas got nothing to do with killer radiation, right? The isotopes are totally... Uh, I don't know if there is an isotope for bananas, actually. It's just some background radiation, right? I never heard of a banana isotope in my life, have you? So it probably don't even exist. It's just that indigenous... It's It has nothing to do with radiation anyway. In fact... It's been around for four billion years already. It's indigenous natural form, see? Chern Chernobyl is so small, friggin' small, Lunar says, compared to this tank hill. Uh, makes Charles Manson look sane compared to the behaviors of Dana. I mean, uh, those people. I'm sorry, I'm insane. I'm just losing my mind, Eva says. And I think about, oh yeah, I gotta catch up with your other comments. And back. I think about the horrors to come, and I also suck my thumb and cringe, so to speak. Yeah, tell me about it. Derp. What does derp mean, anyway? Can we throw bananas into the holes with them? No. 137. 138. 132. 136. 135. There's plutonium. There's strontium. There's the uranium. All of those family trees which is a terrible name for this stuff. And unless your family is Charles Manson, and everybody's like... So I kind of wigged out there for a while, did I? Shit happens. See what I mean? YouTube will grab the stream and I'm back up and running. It doesn't lose a beat. That's a little bit annoying, though, isn't it? When it does that. But all you gotta do is sit it out, and that's just YouTube. But it won't kick me off. I'm not going anywhere. Uh oh, I kicked something that time. Explain the banana thing again. I just done it like for like ten minutes. You're gonna have to go back and watch the video. I'm sorry, man. It's just uh, I'm way off that schedule right now. A banana. Of course, I'm gonna do. It. I'm just being a dick. A banana's got uh, a banana and airplane background radiation. What do a banana and Fukushima radiation have in common? Nothing! <laughs> Fucking zero! The ones who say banana is somehow <laughs> equated with uh, plutonium isotopes <laughs> or beta or gamma or alpha particles. Like, pull! Pull! You can't blame them, though, see? You can't blame them for being stupid. Because that's their job, was to sit there and read the teleprompter and whatever it says. They're not actually got a thought in their own head. If they do it, they better keep it in their head, okay? Their job is to read a teleprompter and sell it! Sell it like it means your job depends on it, because it does. And that's why they got hired in the first place, was because they were zombies. They were MK Ultra, parasitic, perfect little... Monsters that will go out and sell their souls, murder many. Who would you rather have the serial killer coming after you? The guy with the knife in his hand? Or the guy in the office who's going to sign away uh, your pensions and your 
country. I better had the guy with the knife in his hand coming at me. And the fucker just sitting up in that office. Got that job so he can murder thousands with the stroke of a pen. And it, and that's that's really truly does happen all the time. Yeah, that was a pretty good rant. I went off that time. Arr. I'm going to come down and say ha ha. Uh, yeah, we all got cut off that time, including me. That's okay. I always show back up because Google loves me. Woo! Uh, that's, why, that's how this works, right? Google locks on your single. So if my whole neighborhood got kicked off, Google would be sitting there waiting. As soon as I came back on, it would... and I wouldn't lose a second. And, you know, I would lose those seconds, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to restart the stream, rather. I would pick up wherever I left off. And so if you get kicked off, usually that's your own problems. But if I got kicked off, I'll be right back every time. So don't give up. I'll be right there. Yeah, the media reports are maddening. You're welcome. I better check my picture so Nuber Magic doesn't yell at me. He can find other things to yell at me. I like being yelled at. Makes me homesick sometimes. I come from a big family, so... We were like the Waltons, in one sense. I think it would be a really good way to do it. So, uh, I was lucky. Come from a big family. Hi, Third Watch. Hi, Mount Paul. Is that a banana in your fuel pool? <laughs> Bananas do give off radiation. Yeah, but no, it's not. Like, it's not. They're not giving off isotopes, okay? They're not like a melted core was pumping out most toxic, deadly stuff that'll kill you if you get too close to it. Right, the background radiation of, of uh, bananas is the indigenous, it's everywhere. If you're on a plane, you'll get the same radiation. It's, it's, they just use that because the banana shows up on it for the counters. But that's really all a Geiger counter is actually good for is reading banana innocuous background, hopeless radiation. I missed a banana talk, but I know what you're talking of uh, Forbes magazine has put out pure propaganda. Yeah, and everybody's doing it. Hi, Lori. Hi, Albert again. Uh, Planet X, don't talk. Ice on or you'll get kicked off. <laughs> Too late. Hi, Starlight. Zombie bananas, very unappe unappealing. I'll come over from this side for a second. So, like, I changed the settings on my microphone. Is that working for everybody? Is that worse than my other hideous setup I had? I've done everything with this microphone. I'm so tired of the microphone. But Nuber Magic has something to say. Where's your toe? It just disappeared. I almost had you, man. Hang on. Hi, Ray Clay. Thank you. He's laughing. I'm not sure if he's laughing at me or with me or... <laughs> not that it matters. Cause that's the whole point, right? I don't, I like it. Stick it, tell me, man. Anybody, not Nuber Magic, of course, but he can do it too. But anybody, that's the whole point of these live streams, right? You hope that people will find any holes in your story. Not in any of the debt, but because I make simple mistakes where I don't even recognize I said it, but I normally would never say those types of mistakes. But it's okay to call me on that stuff too. But if I'm making any kind of uh, boo-boos, I need to know. Right? That's the whole point I'm excited about the live stream is it has to keep you honest if you're going to do that at all. And 31 days into the stream, uh, I'm doing pretty good, I think. I'm keeping just two the stuff I know and trying to engage a little bit and point out the little things. I can go read the headlines like I have for many years. And I think the live stream is about chance for people to flush things out, get a question in and get an answer a lot of the times. And sometimes people put the quest, same question on each of my videos. If you do that, then it shows up as spam. I don't even see it. But after I can go in and I'll try to unspam it, not spam. And But it still doesn't show up unless somebody else does it. But you have to go into... Uh, so that's a bit of a pain when because uh, Google is doing this all the time. YouTube is doing that all the time. There's a spam filter. I still haven't got the Google... Plus account sorted out, and I can't get access to anybody's comments that goes into that filter, and that's really wrong. That's stupid, right? But if you put the same question on YouTube twice or even three times, YouTube marks them as spam. Oh, not that one. Dun, 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 dun. Try lower. What am I on now? Lower left, lower right. 
I like it. I like it. I always wonder what this side, this side of my face looked like. But it would always have to lean because it's harder to look when you do that. Booyah, man! Uh, hi, Patrick Smith. Sounds pretty good. That's good. Um, hi, Mr. Your Bang Green. Bang, bang Green. Your Bang Green. Mr. Your Bang Green. Every 333 years. 333. My dives were limited to 320 minutes. Unless I was going to stay for six weeks. Uh, yeah, make a video, Annabeck. Uh, Google couldn't find any love if they were a banana in the monkey house. Nice. Thank you, Paul. No, Paul. Hi, you're a prop. I thank Google Plus for making you do live streaming. <laughs> you still haven't sent me your number. How can I phone you and let you know I'm coming online? <laughs> Wake him up. I don't care if he's asleep. Hey, new rope. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah, I agree with you, man. You gotta realize I was all by myself. I had nobody to help me until you come along and show me the better way. So let me scold everybody for the last 30 days for not saying something like that. I'll remember all of you Christmas when I'm coming down your chimneys. <coughs> Dude, I almost said somebody else volunteered their numbers so I can give them a call. Hi, Lori. Okay, Annie. Sounds good. Uh, let me come down and finish up, I guess. Um, let me catch up with some comments. How about that? Patrick, lower the picture. We got, that was the last thing I was doing. Banana Randa. Banana Randa, third watch. Planet 4, X4, 16. Got something there in the link. I don't know what it is. I'll check after, but. 80 now. Ray Clay. Hi, Andrew. Andrew, uh, 42, Arch, I'm not even going to try it because my glasses are not really that good. I don't like glasses, I only wear glasses for this anyway. Everything else I'll fake it. Um, hi Olga, probably, I probably uh, cannibalized your name, did I? Oli at I got no idea. Says says cheers to cucumber. Let's see if I can catch anything I didn't catch up on. I'll just take a second here, folks. Hi Charles, thank you for the other comments too. By the way, third watch has just shown their age. I missed that one. I'll catch that after the night. Some funny stuff there last night. Like I say, some of you people got a lot of growing up to do. You're having too much fun. You're having too much fun. You're not committing enough crimes. That's why I got the old cam video up today so people can learn how to commit crimes, which is speaking out. Chop, chop. Yeah, uh, thanks, Albert. Hi, Liddy Goats. Liddy, Lil Go Get Out too. Or what if the debris of the comet eye on tail hit the Pacific leading to another tsunami? Do we really need to have that conversation? We already got one meteorite right coming at us called Fukushima. We don't need another one. This is a story I've heard every time there's a comet name mentioned. Is that, what about it hits us? We're in a lot of shit. And if, like everything else, and we've seen one come into Russia. Uh, I think that was now recorded at over 40,000 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. I hope they had their seatbelts on. And, you know, it's not like it can't happen. Hang on, I'll be back in this. I'm coming back. Almost there. That's kicked off again that time. Get kicked off again by Al Qaeda. Let me get another picture up there. I better fix that for new magic gets on my ass here.
There we go. Too late, buddy. I'm way ahead of you that time. Oh, yeah, man. I'm bad. That's what I am. I'm bad. Now I can shift my head a little bit back. I like it over here to like the Muppet. Can I, can I do it like the Muppet? No, that's kind of, yeah. That's pretty funny. Now I'm off track. Okay, let me run down. There was a couple of headlines, though. I did. Hi, Mr. Uh, Europrop. Yeah, trying to figure out chat names is... I'm just trying to be polite. The pro proliferation of nuclear energy is a symptom of the insanity of the Western-based modern science. It is reflective of, of people who have so little respect for life they are willing to sacrifice their own grandchildren's generations. Is a fitting, is a fitting uh, statement. That's India country today, November 25th, 2013. And TEPCO recently revised the daily flow of contaminated water in the ocean from 300 tons a day to 400 tons a day to try to make up because the CCM that they're recording Forget about the uranium, forget about the plutonium, forget about the strontium, forget about the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weaponized isotopes and particulates. Forget all that. Forget about the three melted cores with a million gallons flown over each one, 4.3 billion a day. One of them is MOX fuel. It's like a million reactors pour hemorrhaging into the ocean every day. Forget all, forget about all of that. Forget about it for one second. And think about bananas. How deadly they are that they got to be used in every conversation you hear out there by every expert and every pundit and every media on this planet. Because it's much easier to talk about that one than it is to talk about the ones I was just talking about before that. See? And then the nuclear energy can keep their fantasy alive. That These are general electrics. You know, it's not hard to understand who owns all of this. Right? The same people that supply the weapons to both sides of every war, right? Same people who destroy a country, then lend the money it can't afford, and then go and take its sovereignty away, take its fresh water, take its natural resources for pennies on a dollar at best. That's what a democracy is. When a handful of corporations come in and cannibalize your country and replace it with a handful of people from the same institutions, like Yale, like Harvard, like MIT, like Stanford, like Berkeley. These are where you will eventually find out that all the shakers and mover came from, and all the psychopaths came from, the ones that will sign away millions of lives with the stroke of a pen so they can get home and have an early game of golf because it really doesn't mean nothing to them. And then the TEPCO and Japanese culture are victims but they're also cultable because they have blocked the internet now for 31 days. And so the Japanese people can't tell their side of the story. And so we exist. Not only because the media has insisted on using bananas and airplane radiation as part of an equation that it doesn't belong into. It's like doing math and throwing in um, a barbecue into the equation and assigning it an extra number that you have to put in all your new math from now on. But why would you put a barbecue into a math number? Because you wanted a number, but you wouldn't use a barbecue. You see what I'm saying? It's something, I know it's a poor example, but it's just, that's what a banana and that's what airplane radiation are. They're indigenous to planet Earth. You don't need to be on an airplane to get those radiations. You're going to get them anyway. Because there's indigenous has been here for four and a half billion years. Now, some of that's got weaponized, and it's so deadly that life doesn't have a chance on Earth anymore. And whatever survives will adapt to too strong radiation. And nobody is being warned. Nobody is gets that opportunity to make their own decisions or to be informed that the end of the world is coming and that we don't get a chance to bring the whole world together like a meteorite coming at us would do, you know? If there was a meteorite coming at you, the whole world would put all the universities and all the rockets and all the military would get together and get all their secret weapons out and then they would go attack that, right? It would be Earth's last, last stand. 
that's what we're facing. We're facing, truly facing, Earth's last stand. With a massive amount, inconceivable amount. Uh, we're talking about big storms that'll be hundreds of miles wide and two and three and four hundred miles an hour. Wiping out entire coastlines. The Philippines was nothing. There's nothing left standing in the Philippines, folks. Even on the outskirts, where it only got 100 mile an hour winds, it still blew down everything. But 235 mile an hour sustained gust and 195 mile an hour sustained winds, that was just recorded by the radar. Who knows what it was actually? It could have been 270 miles an hour, obviously, at some places when it struck shore, because it struck at those numbers. That shouldn't have happened on Earth. It happened because there's so much radiation over the last almost a thousand days gone into the Pacific Ocean. The ocean is heating up, and when it picks up all, it swept, remember, swept right over Japan, those um, storms, and it picked up all that isotopes, right? That's what it does. It's like a big tornado with a hundred more alloy. It's unbelievable. And this is all happening because we don't get a chance to try to deal with it by using the knowledge we have on this planet. And we might never get the chance unless we have a lot of informed people out there informing all the right people or trying anyway, or trying to stop the lies, you know? At some point, you know, that it's going to come out that they lied to you. And they're finished. Utterly, truly finished this time because they can't hide the dead Pacific for much longer. They just can't hide that for much longer. And so we're worried that anarchy could follow because... As if it comes out the wrong way, people will panic and do stupid shit. And that'll just escalate because there's a lot of stupid people out there that are sucked in by these lies. And they're going to be so angry. First, at the media for lying, for deceiving them. So angry that they're finished if it goes that way. So they can't have it go that way, see? And so they're going to try everything in their books to, to try to keep it just like it is and not tell people why they got all these tumors in their body. That's truly what they're up to. Because they're terrified, and with good reason, because all their lies are going to be found out really soon that they lied so much that banana truly doesn't got nothing to do with Fukushima, that an airplane radiation, backscatter radiation, got nothing to do with this radiation, and that they took out the only opportunity society had. They abrogated their responsibilities to inform us, and we ended up with a bunch of dumb people that exasperated just to the point where we can no longer control it. And so we're pushing as hard as we can to bring the world together in unification, to forget race, religion, uh, creeds, or to put aside our bigotry and our racism and come together for this meteorite named Fukushima that will stomp 95% of this planet into existence, into, into the, uh, a radiated hell. This is a radiated hell we're looking at. And we can't no longer put up with the banana routine and the airplane routine, right? We can't do that no more. It's time to, time to push back and not be polite about it. That's the point. You can't be polite anymore. You, you just can't be polite with these people anymore. You have to be assertive. You have to get in their faces now. You have to challenge them at every nook and cranny. You have to always push it. And you go to your local community and ask them when are they going to do Fukushima evacuation drills for the community so everybody knows what to do. And watch them panic. And give them 24 hours and he figures it out that what you're saying is really, truly serious. And at that point, we might see something happen. That might be just what it is. It's not like the movies where some kid looks up with a telescope and sees the meteorite coming and then warns the scientist... And then many months later, the scientist sees it on their own. They say, hey, didn't that kid show us this months ago? Mm -hmm. And they go run into that kid hoping that he could have something else, some little tiny tibbit, because they're so far behind. Well, you're that kid, okay? That's your job, trust me. You're the one of the rare ones to get these narratives. And that's the narrative that'll the difference I think because that's one we got from everybody they're best of everybody that's what we 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 cannibalized out of everything out there we came up with the truth that way we sourced it out we vetted it and that's the reality it's you you're smart enough you're smart enough to know the difference 
And so when you have that opportunity to hit them back, you got to hit them back. You find a nice way to do it if you like. I think the time for being nice and polite is long past. I think smart and assertive and just move on to the next dummy that is talking about bananas and background radiation, like the pundits. They all got to be hammered, right? They got Twitter accounts. They got blogs. I'll say goodbye to everybody. I'll just give a quick shout down the line here, I guess. Uh, I'm yakking away again. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Bubba. Doug, Planet. I'll check out that link, whatever it is. Don't get off topic, that's all. Hi, Paul. Hi, News Eye. O'Brien, Video One. Annabeck, I'm in British Columbia. Annabeck, uh, Paul again. Trinky Tick, Fusion Before Fission. <laughs> Vincer Tobe, Europrop, Canterbury Hate. I don't know if you commented before. I didn't. I missed it because I only get so many comments on the inside, folks, and I can't even comment on videos. I got lucky two nights ago, but I couldn't do it last night, and I couldn't do it tonight. I couldn't comment, or I would have, just to say hi. Um, checks and balance. Ain't Jester, Curtsy K, I probably Adamne, Lori. I probably not going to catch up much more than that. I'm just running. Laurie, I understand there's no way anybody can keep up with me every night. And that's why these videos renders and shows back up. And then people can catch it at their leisure, you know. When you get a chance and you are able to show up, it's appreciated. And this is just an easier way for me to make videos. And also, it's an awesome way to bring people in and have some chats. I really enjoy that so much. I'll never get tired of that part, I don't think. I would just do it at this stage now for fun anyway. Um... Because I can't help it anyway. Because I'm at this constantly all day. I need somewhere to vent just like you. Just like us. I'm no different. I'm no better. And everybody, you know, I got lots of links below my video for folks. Um, and I do put a song here each day. And I and listen to that song myself just before I come on line. Five minutes before I come on line, I listen to that. I come over, I get ready, and I click, and I'm live streaming. And that's original music you've never heard before. And so it has no memories for you. That's really important, I think. Because it excites 25% uh, of your 20% of your brain and allows you to start absorbing right away, without uh, you know without it being a corporation song. That's the scary stuff. You don't want that in your head before you listen to this. You want to get original music of some type in your head, even if it's just a note, even if it's just a drums. You want to get those notes in your head rather than corporation. Just something else goes on there. I don't know about. I guess. We'll see you tomorrow night on day 32 of straight daily streaming. Unbelievable. We're still at it. Doesn't look like we're going to slack anytime soon. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Thanks, folks. Uh, lots of links under my video to all the great people. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs>